Hey everyone, I am Mike of Mike and Test Play, and welcome back to Pokemon Sword Rival Run. Uh, in the last episode, we got through the Galar Mine, fought Bead, and explored Route 4 with our new, well, an evolution for our starter and a new Pokemon for our team, the adorable Lily Amper. And in this part, I missed an, an item in the last episode, so I found it in this one, and now we're heading into Turf Field. Look, just take a look at that, Mike. That's Turfield Stadium down there. That it is. The gym leader just returned, too. His Milo's his name. But the place is jam-packed with challengers. It'll be ages before our turn comes up. Oh, but Sonya was looking for you, Mike. She wanted to ask you about something. She tried asking me, but I had no idea. She's up on What's-Her-Face Hill. <laughs> you know the one. What? You don't know the hill? Well, have a look at your map if you're not sure. Oh, wow! <gasps> it's a yipper! Oh, if it isn't Sonya Yipper, he's a good boy. <laughs> He'll show you the way. He is a good boy. All yampers are good boys. They're adorable. Mine's the best, though. <laughs> I'm not going to follow him right away, though, because first of all, I want to show off that no, you cannot enter the gym. I am being stopped by an invisible barrier here, which is weird. <laughs> It's like the only time that there's an invisible barrier in Pokemon. Most of the time there's, like, people saying things. But Turfield has a bit to offer, so I want to be going over what we can find here uh, before the gym battle. Starting with... An item I'm never going to use. We can't leave the town yet. Um, this is a thing, and there's path into the water. Mysterious. <laughs> um, items? Items? No? Yes, an Everstone. An Everstone prevents a Pokemon from evolving. Basically, if you want to hold on to a... Well, if you want to keep a Pokemon in an evolutionary stance or learn moves faster, holding an Everstone's the way to go so you don't have to press B every time. But we find a TM for Brutal Swing over here. Brutal Swing is, I mean... It's basically just... I mean, it hits, like, all opponents in a multi-battle or whatever. But it's basically just a decent dark type move it's not even as good as bite in my opinion because it doesn't have a secondary effect uh well outside of hitting multiple opponents in a you know multi-battle a double battle but um it also hits your teammate so i don't know there's there's uses for it um we've got a pokemon center here and i don't believe there's anything interesting in it um i mean there's the same useful stuff that's in every Pokemon Center, but there's not a special, um, you know, shop uh, or anything like that. There is over here, well, a glass of flower, and a flower shop, which you can't do anything with. And then there's all these stone pillars around, which are interesting. And a free max revive on the other side of the gym so um the tm that you get isn't really helpful for the gym but uh, <laughs> max revive is, revive is always helpful the town of turf field a town nestled within the nurturing bowl of our many terraced farming fields i do love the look of this town by the way it is it is definitely a favorite of mine uh just so like laid back and relaxed but also like well designed um Renowned since days of yore for the stunning and historical geoglyph upon our hill. Interesting. And I see a photo. Yeah, it's not, just not the same. And we're just following Yamper. It's like waiting in place for us. Come on, hurry up. But, um, there's just all these stones. I wonder what they're for. Three X attacks. Wow. All right. <laughs> That's another little item for gym prep. And this guy is, uh, well, it's a mystery of the stones. And a free leaf stone, which can evolve certain Pokemon. Um, very helpful if you need a leaf stone evolution. Because it's free. Thanks, Yamper. Bow wow wow. <laughs> well, Yamper. I had you come because I wanted to hear what you thought. Of the giant, weird... <laughs> So that Geoglyph, what do you think of it? I think it has to do with Dynamax, given how large it is. <laughs> Seems likely. It certainly looks like a gigantic Pokemon. I suppose people 3,000 years ago could have imagined this, but it looks too similar to Dynamax. It can't just be a coincidence. 
A long time ago, a great black storm covered the Galar region. Giant Pokemon ran rampant. But what was that black storm they called the Darkest Day? What connection does it have to Dynamax? Guess I'm the lucky lady who will be looking into that. Grant sure gives me a lot to do. Thanks for your thoughts on the matter. As thanks, I'll give you a League card. And she gives you Milo's League card. This is a, well, Milo's a Grass-type Gym Leader. Things will go well for you if you use Fire, Flying, or Bug-type moves. Also, Poison and Ice. <laughs> Take these two. It'd be pretty bad if your Pokemon weren't in fighting form. Two revives. So we get lots of healing items, just in case. Get yourself to the stadium and battle yourself silly, I think she said. I don't know. I was kind of skipping through it. Um, she thinks it was created with the help of Pokemon. It is perplexing how the grass never grew in those spots. Bottle of fresh water in the water. Love it. <laughs> and of course, we can be a Greedent! Or, well, not quite a whatever the taller Pokemon is. We'll learn later. Want to stick my head in the photo stand in when I grow taller? Sure, you do that, buddy. I do love that people just sort of walk around in towns. The treasure lies buried somewhere in Turfield. According to the treasure map, the trick is to find the tre to finding the treasure lies in the standing stones. Seek yourself three standing stones with grass before the other ones. Use well that strength and find then the strength of its strength in the end. Dally not if you've a mind to find what time has left behind. That's what it says, but I can't make heads or tails of it. Okay, I love this puzzle straight up because it is very interesting and unique. This one says water. So water is in the top left here. And we were told to start with grass and then to find its strength. This one says flying. Hmm. This one says poison. Both flying and poison are good against the grass type, while water is weak against the grass type. So there's all these stones all over the place, and they have different types on them. This one says dark. Not gonna be relevant, because it is not weak or strong against the grass type. This one says grass. Once you have hit grass, then that starts a timer. I don't know the exact timing on it, but I do know that you have to kind of move. Um, so since I've hit grass, I am going to run back to the strength of grass, which is water. Then, since I've hit water, I have to go find something that water is strong against. So, in order to find that, I haven't seen that yet. None of the types that we've encountered are weak to water, but I believe... Oh my gosh. It's either this one or it's a different one. But I think this one says fire. And if you do it quick enough, grass, water, fire, you get an expert belt. Um, expert belt is a good, a really good item. It slightly boosts the power of super effective moves. So if you have a Pokemon with a diverse move set, an expert belt can be a really good thing to give it. I'm gonna give it to my Sparky because he is going to have a very diverse move set as time goes on. Um, right now, it's not all that helpful for him, but um, for right, uh, but for the long term, it's a good item for him, so I'm just gonna slap it on him for now, because uh, I don't really have a lot of old items. But a free expert belt is very good to have this early on. And now that we have spoken with Sonya, take a look at this, Mike. The grass gym badge. I got it in one try. We were... We've been recording for like eight minutes. How did you do that so fast? I reckon I'm just the greatest when it comes to wrangling Wooloo. I've had plenty of practice at it after all. But I'm sure you can win this one too. After all, you are my rival. I like Hop. <laughs> Even if he is crazy quick. Turfield Stadium. Downs the gym as many times as you want. I guess it's a test of your will. League cards of gym leaders tell all sorts of stories. They do. Um... Usually before every gym, you will get the gym leader's league card, and of course you can, well, select it and flip it and find out about them. Um, <laughs> it's just some fun information. I'm just going to leave it up there. I'm not going to read all of the, the league cards, but I do like them. I do really like them. They give backstory on the, on the gym leaders. Oh, sorry. I keep mentioning, I keep forgetting this. On your league card, <laughs> I forgot what I made. Um, on your league card, you can see your money, your battle points, and your watts. This is the only place that you can see watts outside of a store. Um, 
And you can see Pokemon up to level 20 will listen to them. That is for traded Pokemon only. Pokemon that you catch, keep listening to you regardless. And you can see the level of Pokemon you can catch. Uh, we can catch up to level 20 before we have our first gym badge. Those change when you, when you earn gym badges. And speaking of earning gym badges, let's head on in and talk to Ball Guy! Hey there! Thanks for rolling by to have a chat with your mate, the Ball Guy! As a sign of our friendship, let me give you a wonderful Pokeball! He gives you a friend ball, which, like the name suggests, it makes the wild Pokemon caught with you more friendly towards you immediately. Very good if you want to evolve a Pokemon through happiness. For example, the Eevee you can find in Route 4, which have multiple happiness-based evolution in this game. Um, happiness and affection kind of got merged together in this game, so... There's three Eeveelutions who you can really just get automatically if you catch them in a friend ball. So yeah, friend ball guy, always useful to talk to. And this kid will trade you a Cantonian Meowth in exchange for a Galarian Meowth. So yep, like I said in the last episode, I caught that Galarian Meowth specifically for this trade. So let's give the kid what he wants. Now, unlike the last trade, which didn't really seem to serve much of a purpose, I mean, getting a Squovit for a Bunnelby, but we get Cash the Cantonian Meowth here. <laughs> this is the only place to get a Cantonian Meowth in the main part of the game, so, you know, it can be very helpful. Um, Cash comes equipped with... Wow, is that a Citrus? Yeah, a Citrus Berry. Whoops. I didn't mean to open my bag, I just meant to put it in my bag? <laughs> Um, but yeah, he's level 18, um, ooh, uh, timid nature, that is not good for you, but you have technician, um, come with last resort? Wow, I didn't know that, <laughs> I haven't actually done most of these trades in my own plays of this game, um, but I want to show them off, you know, I want to show what you can get through trades, so this Meowth, not gonna be good, but, um, you know, timid's not terrible on him. Rest of Pokemon are weak to fire moves, yes. <gasps> you! You're a gym challenger, right? I'll oh, remember your name if you can receive a grass badge. And you've got a little blip bug, I like that. Is this ch kid a gym challenger too? Yes, there are fans. Um, I heard the trainer's hops rival. There are fans all over the gym, uh, the gym, the gyms, <laughs> the gym stadiums. Um, so apparently you can't face the gym leader without completing the gym mission first. I wonder what we'll have to do. I'm pretty good at dancing. Hmm. Yes, there are Pokemarts at the gyms, so you can stock up on items if you need them. Um, hmm, I don't actually have that many potions. You know what? I'm going to pick up another five potions. Um, as you'll see, the gyms in Galar, Sword and Shield are not very difficult games. And, oh, you can also buy uniforms here. <laughs> um if you want them. I don't want to spend that much money on a uniform. But the gyms in Galar are different. Welcome, Gym Challenger. Allow me to help you through your registration. First things first, how about a quick refresher about the Gym Challenge? Your goal as a Gym Challenger is to complete each Gym mission, defeat every Gym Leader, and gather eight Gym Badges. Got it. <laughs> so, would you like to attempt the Gym mission? Let's do it. If you would like to attempt the Gym mission, please change your uniform. Yes, you have to wear your uniform, which is, well, kind of preset. So, you will not be wearing your clothes into the Gym well, into the gyms, in general, um, which is a little bit of an odd choice, but you did get to choose your uniform number, and I love that it turns the gyms into basically a sport for the fans. Um, and welcome to the first gym. It is amazing. I'm going to be honest here. I'm pretty sure, in my own opinion, this is my favorite gym of all time. Not the battles. The battles are, well, you're going to see. Um, they're pretty simple. But the challenge itself is so unique, so funny, and just so fun. Um, the mission given by Turfield's Pokemon Gym is this. To chase our unruly Wooloo! <laughs> to that blockade we've made from our bales of straw over there! Oh, by the way, you can call me Dan. I serve as a referee, and it's also my job to report the results of battles to the League HQ. Now, let the gym mission begin! With a whistle! <laughs> yes, so, in Galar, the Pokemon gyms are more events than just simple 
locations of gym leaders. Uh, there's always been puzzle elements to Pokemon gyms, and in this, the puzzles are less puzzles and more little events that you get to do. This is the most fun one because you get to just chase a herd of Wulu all the way through these fields. Uh, they have You have to get all of them onto the mat at the same time in order to, well, fill the requirement of having 20 Wulu. The Yamper will try to scare off the Wulu, but it's very easy to avoid them um, to just get the Wulu through. And they blast away the pails of hay. I love this gym challenge. It's super easy, but it's adorable and fun. Welcome, gym challenger. Sorry, but I'll have to send you packing. It's my job. There are also gym trainers. Um, some of them can be avoided. Some of them can't be reminiscent of every Pokemon gym ever. And, as you may have noticed, my team consists of a water type, an electric type, and a grass type. The first gym is a grass type gym. I don't have anything good against grass types yet. Um, however, I'm not going to have too many problems. Granted, Chompers here is the weakest against grass types, so I decided to just have him in to try to take care of at least some of the trainers. <laughs> Although he's not having a fun time against this very first one. Uh, but the grass type has a ton of weaknesses that you can exploit. If you started with a score bunny, obviously you're going to have an easy time here. Uh, but the amount of flying, fire, um, bug, poison types that you've been able to encounter already. Even ice types you can get in the wild area. I mean, the wild area, you know, makes the game easy. But, um, yeah, the, the amount of Pokemon you can have at this point that absolutely rip through this gym. Oh, if you defeat the gym trainers, the Yamper go and stand near them. So they're not going to scare your Wulu. But I don't mind being scared. Because <laughs> it's adorable! Look at him! The Yamper's just, like, all happy. Yeah. When your Wulu gets separated like this, it can be a little bit difficult to get them, well, where you, where you need them to be. But you can actually use the Yamper to scare them towards the goal, like I'm sort of doing right here. And, uh, you know, it's it's really not too, not too bad, even if your Wulu gets separated from each other. It's pretty easy to still roll them right where they need to go and break through the hail bays. Bales of hay. I don't know why I called him the wrong thing there. Um, but like I said, this trainer I could have avoided, but I didn't want to. Um, and I did not heal Chompers, so that might not go great for me. But he's got a Budu, and I'm not afraid of a Budu. <laughs> um, evolve it, and whew, I'd be switching out. But, yeah, the the first gym is, is not a challenge. You've got a ton of different things that could just sweep it easily. Like I said, I'm using a water type, um, an unevolved water type who doesn't have any moves that are super effective, and what? What? Oh, come on. I just said that he wasn't having any problems. I guess it was a speed tie. Um, but yeah, I, I, I beat one Pokemon. I was trying to beat a second without healing. So yeah, it's not a hard challenge by any means. Um, uh, you know what, though? I am going to revive him because the reason I had Chompers out front, um, I kind of want him to gain a little bit of experience from the trainers uh, because he will not be battling against the actual gym leader. Uh, I have a plan for the gym leader, don't get me wrong. Um, but uh, the plan is not to have a Pokemon weak against the gym leader's type against an actual gym leader. And this Budu is now annoying me because it just keeps healing itself with Absorb while stealing my HP. <laughs> um, and because it's surprisingly quick. Um, Budu's a baby Pokemon, so I, I usually... Well, I know that it can be super annoying with its, well, annoying moves. Absorb is not usually among them, but okay. My little, little sparky one, no problem. And gained a level up. All right, excellent. And now you're going to send in an Oddish. I am going to switch back out to Chompers. Again, I'm just trying to keep him well leveled with the rest of my team so that nobody gets, you know, too far ahead or too far behind. Um, but I know that he's going to struggle with an Oddish who's almost at the same level as him. So I'm going to bring in my Ringer. <laughs> Ringo is going to be able to beat this fairly easily. 
Really, the only way you're going to struggle in this gym is if, like me, you have no moves that are good against grass types. They've got a lot of weaknesses. I mean, these guys are grass poison types, so they don't actually have the bug or poison weaknesses, but they add weaknesses to, um, well, psychic. <laughs> um, oh, come on, really? You dodged? <laughs> um, but yeah, really, right now, things are not going well for me. I've got a bad team matchup for this gym. I knew that going into the playthrough when I was setting, you know, deciding what Pokemon I wanted to use. That the first gym would be tough, but honestly, with the resources available to you at this point, this gym is might be the easiest gym ever in any Pokemon game. Um, so I wanted to try to make it at least a little bit difficult in some way by just, you know, having a team that's not exactly a good matchup against it. Um, so I brought in one Pokemon who's weak and one and two other Pokemon whose main <laughs> I'll give it Bow Wow. Balwark instead of the Emperor, whose main moves are not very effective against Grass. Um, I don't plan on doing this for all of the gyms. Some of the gyms I'm going to sweep through pretty easily. But um, for this first one, at least, I wanted it to feel like an actual legitimate challenge. So, yeah, one of my Pokemon got knocked out immediately. So, <laughs> I'd say that qualifies. Now for this final section. The Yamper are running in set patterns. So it is very easy to just sort of stay back. The Wooloo roll way ahead of you. If you get too close, you can start actually splitting them up um, because they, they're trying to go away from the trainer. So very easy to just sort of roll them all along. Excellent. They Ah, oh, no, they didn't make it. I was trying to battle a trainer before they all landed on the platform. But just like that, we clear the last bales of hay and have cleared our first gym challenge. <laughs> I'm still going to battle the trainer, though, because I want the experience. The gym leader lies just ahead of you, but that doesn't mean you'll be reaching him. Yes, gym trainers, you only have the chance to battle them while you go through the gym challenge. So, that was an interesting head tilt. <laughs> and a bounce sweep. Um, yes, so once you have defeated a gym a gym leader, you never get to battle these trainers again. So, unlike other trainers, you can just come back and battle at a later time. These ones are <laughs> one shot, um, so battle them every, every time you go through a gym. Do not miss out on the free on the experience. Um, it's also you know a really good way to get used to battling whatever type you're up against, um, especially if your team isn't well prepared for that type. You can kind of see what works and what doesn't. So Ringo here gaining a little bit more experience and gonna fight an Oddish. I'm gonna switch up because I want to save my double hit PP. Um, for the gym leader, and I'm already halfway out of it. Um, so I'm gonna just switch over to Sw Swift. Oh no. Oh no. That's a super effective poison move. That also lowered my special then. Switching back to double hit so that I don't get KO'd. <laughs> okay. And Oddish, instead of taking advantage of my lowered special defense, it opted to try to raise its own special attack. I don't like only having three double hits in the final, but that's fine. <laughs> had, to, had to go for the KO. And Ringo gains a little bit more experience, putting them all at level 19, heading into the gym leader. Next is the gym leader, right? What a strong challenger. And this is something that I really like about these games. Pokemon gyms are always supposed to be a challenge. Um, but they were kind of negated by the fact that you could just go and heal before you fought the gym leader. Not so here. If we leave, we have to start the gym challenge all over again. So the fact that my team is a little banged up, I now need to use healing items in order to, well, be prepared for the gym leader. Uh, so I'm going to heal up my team. That's why I bought the extra potions. Uh, I'm going to heal Ringo back up to full strength, but Chompers, I wanted you able to take a hit, but you're not going to be battling in this gym battle um, unless something really goes wrong, but I don't think it will. I'm going to switch Sparky up to the front. He is my plan for the start of this gym leader, and we are just going to advance right past the Wooloo that we herded, up the stairs, and we get a little celebratory... Steam with a gym mission cleared. You wave to the camera because this is a spectator sport. The gym challenge is, well, 
very popular in Galar. I strongly recommend saving right here before every gym battle. I'm not going to do it, obviously. Um, but I recommend it because, uh, just in case something goes wrong. As we walk out onto the field with crowds of fans cheering. Are they cheering for us or are they cheering for their hometown hero? I don't know, but I really like it. it makes the gym battle so much more like it, of an epic feel. My gym's the first one people face, so we get a lot of challengers. That's why I try to keep the gym mission challenging, but that didn't stop you from completing it, Mike. Proper job. Seems Sure she seems like you understand Pokemon real well. This is going to be a doozy of a battle. I'll have to Dynamax my Pokemon if I want to win. As the crowd cheers. And the battle is set to begin. With the awesome Gym Leader music, we are challenged by Gym Leader Milo. Milo will start out with a Gossip Flower! Level 19, Regenerator for its ability, and the move set of Magical Leaf, Round, and Rapid Spin, the improved Rapid Spin of this generation. <laughs> Interestingly, the Gym Battle starts out by teaching you about Dynamaxing. This is your hint that you can use Dynamax in the Gym Battles. Yes, you've only got it once, and it lasts for three turns, but... The, each of the gym leaders will gy Dynamax, or in later cases, Gigantamax, their final Pokemon. So always be prepared for that, and you can Dynamax whenever you want. It is the player's greatest advantage in this gym, or in this region, is that they're limited, they're going to have a set time when they Dynamax their Pokemon. You can do it anytime you want. I decided to lead off with Sparky. I'm going to take advantage of my Parahack strategy um, in order to take out his Gossip Floor. Because, well, my only real chance against his ace Pokemon is Ringo. So I wanted to keep him safe and secure for the final battle. So to have him at full health, Sparky took the lead here. Um, nice critical hit there. And your strategy is working really well. Um, Rapid Spin raised its speed, but it was after I paralyzed it. So didn't matter. And yep, did not get hit beyond that. So Sparky is definitely ready to go for, well, the battles to come. Um, gets his first gym, well, gym knockout, and Ringo barely doesn't get that level, but that's okay because Milo is about to send out his Eldegoss, and yes, I will be switching out to Ringo for the epic showdown <laughs> of Grass-type versus Grass-type. My starter getting his debut in the gym. Woohoo! We're not going to be done in that easy. We're tough as weeds. As the music epically rises to a crescendo. And the crowd chants. I know it's coming. Eldegoss is his ace Pokemon. He has Regenerator for its ability, level 20. It's moves of Magical Leaf, Leafage, and Round. But as you'll notice in a moment... As I, yes, this max strike is the stronger and I'm the physical attacker. Let's do it. Yeah. First Dynamax I'm in a gym and it's my starter. <laughs> I recommend using Dynamax candy before you do this. I didn't, but you probably should have. Come on then, it's Dynamax time! You're about to be uprooted! Yes, because he is Dynamaxing with his adorable little way he does that. I really like Milo. Character design and personality. He's honestly one of my favorites. I wish he was a tougher gym leader. Because now that Eldegoss has Dynamaxed, its only moves become, well, the same ones I have. Max Strike and um, Max... Whatever the grass move is. <laughs> I actually forget at the moment. But, um, Eldegoss' speed fell. This will really leave you in shock and awe. It's our Dynamax move. Max Overgrowth. Yep. The grass type move. And, uh, not very effective against us. That did way more damage than I was expecting it to. Oh, okay. <laughs> that makes more sense now. It was a critical hit. <laughs> So yes, um, they are always going to use their max moves, so, you know, 
It's gonna heal him. Because <laughs> now it's we're on a grass field. Um, but yes, for the first three turns, all he's going to have is his Dynamax moves. Um, his Eldegoss is a tank. Um, very... Uh, well, I covered it when I covered the Pokemon, but it's a defensive Pokemon. So we actually have our work cut off for us here. Um, because... We do not have any super effective moves. The strategy, obviously, is hit it with super effective moves. It'll go down really easily. Um, the critical hit put him ahead of us here. So I'm going to see... I'm going to see if Max Overgrowth can do anything to it. Um, I'm switched away from the Max Strike that is double hit because I know this thing's going to live past the three turns of Dynamaxing, and I need to save my best move for that. So... We've been trading blows as Dynamax Pokemon, but this is far from settled. <laughs> However, the grassy terrain will remain beyond the actual battle, so... Or beyond the actual Dynamaxing, not beyond the battle. That would be uh, a little intense. But now that the Dynamaxing is off, he's back down to his regular old moveset, and... Um, it's not it's not all that intimidating so we're gonna hit you with a double hit see how much it does ooh that was a crit I don't like the looks of that uh, and around that did a lot that was unexpected hmm all right I have a plan <laughs> Yes, good to use non-offensive moves in, well, cases where you could really use a drop defense, like this one. Uh, so, if that round... He didn't use round, he used... Le he used his weakest move? Why? <laughs> round would have brought me to, like, 2 HP. <laughs> well, I guess he figured he was in the lead. And now the grassy terrain is gone. And I'm down to my last double hit. Let's do it, Ringo. Let's win this first gym badge in style. Is that... Oh my gosh, that didn't knock him out. Oh no! He used round! That might KO! Ringo, no! <laughs> I knew this was going to be a struggle for my team, honestly. Um, but I didn't expect him to get KO. So, that was uh, less than an ideal start. But Sparky's here to save the day with a bite. And he gets the KO. <laughs> so, I finally managed to make Milo a difficult gym battle by having... Ooh, Spark for Sparky. Excellent. I'm actually hanging on to Nuzzle for now. You're not going to use Tail Whip, though. Um, just because the Parahack strategy is still very valuable on you. But, um, huh. That means that Sparky here managed to claim... The first gym leader, KO. The power of grass is wilted. What an incredible gym challenger. And we get money for winning! That must have been a fulfilling bat Pokemon battle for you. As proof that you have defeated a gym leader for the gym challenge, allow me to present you with your very own grass badge. Do 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 as we fill in the first section of our gym badge ring, we can now catch a Pokemon up to 25. You need to obtain all eight gym badges in order to complete the gym challenge. And the only way to gather the badges is to defeat every gym leader. And as we exit the stadium, Challenger Mike, my most sincere congratulations on defeating gym leader Milo. Please accept this TM to commemorate your victory. We get the TM for Magical Leaf. It is Milo's signature move. And... Base 60 power, special attack that never misses. Pretty good. And we get Milo's uniform. Yes, you get the the grass uniform here. You get the gym uniform of whatever type the gym was. And, in this case, Milo is coming to talk to us. Some advice for you, Mike. The gym leader has a, the gym challenge has a set order you'll need to follow. So that means your next stop should be in Hullbury to meet Nessa. Hullbury's just beyond Route 5. Or since you've got the grass badge, you could head to the wild area. It's a bit tricky to catch Pokemon that are higher level than the Pokemon on your team, but they make powerful allies if you succeed. And yes, since we can now catch Pokemon up to level 25, and our team tops out at level 19 right now, <laughs> or 20 with Sparky, we can catch Pokemon that are stronger than, well, what we have right now. 
So I'm just going to show off that you can hear the trainers talking about you. This girl. Your name is Mike, right? You're pretty amazing. I've become such a fan. She's our fan now. She said she'd remember our name. And all the trainers are talking about you. <laughs> so you're gaining, well, fans. And as we leave the gym, we are back in Turfield. And that is going to do it for this episode. We heard that may from Milo that maybe we should head to the wild area. So we're going to do that. Not for anything in the wild area. But because this is a rival run. And we just got our first gym badge. Join us next time as I battle Tess in round two of the rival run. <laughs> <laughs>